issue came up during a normal uh, social discussion that the policy that encourages Chinese rural uh, families to have a second child if the first one is a girl is actually uh, encouraging abortion or killing of uh, female children. So the way I'm looking at it is like the policy in itself is se uh, encouraging the people to value uh, men, women, men more than uh, women. I think it's not a good policy. Yeah. <laughs> so I agree with you that the two uh, partially to composite this kind of policy uh, arrangement. The Chinese government at the same time launched the program called the Care for the Baby Girls. Mm -hmm. So it means, for example, in China, the, that the, uh, the policies you know quite well. So for example, in the rural areas, for the household reg uh, responsibility systems, uh, a single child will, worth, uh, will allocate the, the piece of the arable land according to the equivalent to two children. So if you get the one, uh, two girls, you will get more or less the same uh, allocation of the arable land. So, the, the, so that's some kind of arrangement to encourage the rural farmers to have a smaller family, or e even if they have two, two girls, they will have the equal share of the, this kind of the allocation of the uh, land or these kind of things. And also, in China, if you got uh, two daughters, then two daughters will get the privileges to enter the schools and to choose the what kind, which, which school she would like to, to be. Uh, these are some kind of the countermeasures for these kind of the, uh, 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 policies. And more recently, uh, actually when we said that in fi uh, over the last five years, the Chinese Family Planning Program launched a, a social security program for Chinese farmers. It means in rural area, if the farmers they are, uh, if they're farmers, they reach the age of 60. If they only have one child or if they only have two daughters, so they can get some subsidies from central government. So the, the money is not a big, but it's only 60 yuan, about uh, 6 euro per month. So it's not a big money, but for the, in the remote uh, inland areas, so this uh, cash really means a lot to the old age security for these farmers uh, in rural area. So that's uh, as I mentioned, that, uh, we know that the, the, uh, we call the 1.5 kids policy. I mean, the first child is a, is a girl, then you can have the second. So this is not a good policy, but it's a compromise to the reality. So uh, there is some kind of the two suggestions. When, when is that now? We maintain that policy, but we give, give girls more uh, rights and more uh, the special programs let them to develop better than the uh, 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 other, other uh, boys or uh, others. The another policy option is that we get rid of this kind of 1.5 children policy, universally in rural area with the two children policy. So that's uh, some kind of things we are involved in this kind of calculation scenario analysis to see how these things will affect the future population growth and how this will affect the age structure or family structure in the future. Still in the process to do these kind of things. Yes? Uh, my name is Satya Mala. I'm from India. I'm a physician and an epidemiologist, and I'm currently doing PhD from ISS. Uh, I, uh, I mean, it's linked to this uh, sex ratio question. Uh, I don't think the uh, issue is just one child or two child, two children policy. It is basically when a one child policy is sitting on top of a patriarchal attitude. These two have to go together. Yeah. Because left to the left to itself, if supposing there is you know, no discrimination against the girl child, then there will be a no natural sex ratio at birth, which although it would favor boys, yeah. it will still not be so high. So these two have to go, so it's not inequality as such, it is a patriarchal uh, situation. Uh, in India, you said, I think, if I, uh, if I heard correctly, you said something about importing brides from India. Uh, I think it might be a bit of a problem because even in India, we have a problem of sex ratio. Apart from the fact whether it is a good idea, it's, that's a separate issue altogether. 
uh, we uh, found that one of the causes of, uh, like you said, that ultrasound and uh, amniocentesis were one of the, not amniocentesis, ultrasound and other uh, sex selective, uh, sex, sex determination test and sex selective abortions were one of the reasons. In India, we have put in place a legislation which has banned the use of these technologies uh, against for the elimination of the uh, female fetus. So have you ever, have you, has this been one of the uh, policy uh, situations? Yeah. The second question I have is, uh, um, I would like to know something about the causes of death. Because what I, what the little I have read, I found that suicide, particularly in elderly women, was a very major cause of death. And so then what is the kind of policy measures one would require? Yeah. Third, linked to the sex ratio, you're given an aggregate data. If sex ratio at birth were to be disaggregated across your region, probably the sex ratio in, your, in the urban area would be much, much, much you know, higher than what is showing. So there's a serious problem, much more serious than what is uh, being shown. The, and the last question I have is, what has been the impact of the health reforms <laughs> of the health reforms in your country? Because again, when I read some of the data, I, uh, the data from your country, written by somebody, it showed as though there's an increase in, I mean, decrease in life expectancy and increase in death rates in the, rural, in the uh, countryside uh, after the uh, health reforms were um, brought into place. And one of the reasons was the non-availability of medical care at time of illness. Thank you. So a lot, so a lot of, questions. of questions. Maybe yeah. you have to uh, <laughs> repeat later. Yeah. Uh, okay. The the first I think is uh, related uh, to the uh, to the issues of the whether Chinese government or Chinese society take any uh, actions to try to cope with this kind of abnormal sex ratio or the identity uh, abortion of the uh, 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 baby girls. So it's uh, it is a policy. And the policy actually is implemented very rigidly and also the very harsh punishment to the doctors, now the, uh, the, the policy towards the doctor. So if a doctor or the medical, medi uh, medical professionals, if he conducts the, uh, the sex identification, then later that the baby girl was aborted, then once these things are convicted, then the medical professionals will dismiss from medical practice forever. So this was a policy implemented in China over the last almost 10 years. So, but the issue is that even with this kind of very harsh punishment to the medical doctors, but the abnormality of the sex ratio continue to increase. So we can see that from the one, almost 111 in the, in the year 1982 to the uh, 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 to the uh, 117 in the year 2000 to the 120 nowadays. So that's, uh, that's uh, we have to think about uh, what's, the, what, what's the major reason. In, so that's uh, we found sometimes in addition to the use of ultrasound machine to tell the, to identify sex, maybe some kind of the traditional way, traditional means to identify se uh, gender may be used. For example, in the Chinese traditional medicine, yeah, we, in the traditional Chinese medicine, we have the pulse touching. So you uh, touch a different forms of your pulse, then you, the traditional, traditional Chinese medicine, uh, medical doctor can tell what are your pregnancy, what are your uh, the pregnancy <coughs> is a girl or boy. Although it's not 100% uh, accurate, but uh, when you desperately you want to ha have a boy, so you will try every means to guarantee these kind of things. You, you found this. Uh, other means to tell you this is maybe your pregnancy is a girl, then you will abort that. So that's, uh, I think, the, uh, we try to find other cultural reasons behind this abnormal sex ratio. So you are quite right. At this moment, the patriarchal uh, society is a major reason behind this kind of cultural ideologies, because people still value boys more than girls. But since, I think, it's, it's changing. In the urban areas, uh, many of these kind of urban residents are much more prefer girls rather than boys. Because they in China, I'm not sure what's the here in in the Netherlands or in India. 
the Chinese urban residents, urban parents, are value their daughters more because they think that usually they said that the daughter 